focus to a large extent on how the Treasury, if the Treasury is going to be trying to manage the RAND moving forward. How keenly are you watching that midterm budget announcement? Good morning, Alicia. Yes, all eyes on, on this morning, uh, this afternoon's budget. And uh, there's been a lot of talk and debate about whether or not the Treasury is going to deploy some, some measures to try and rein in this rampant RAND. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that we're going to see anything in the form of kind of a Tobin tax or any kind of uh, tax relief or uh, import duties or anything like that being imposed by, by government simply because they haven't really proved to be very effective elsewhere in the world. Um, you know, a lot of our emerging market peers are trying to devalue their currency and uh, despite their best efforts, their currencies remain pretty strong and of course we are still in the throes of a weak dollar environment so you know they can stand on their head uh, if the dollar's weak it's going to be a very difficult uh, task to try and get their currencies to weaken however i do think that there could be some more emphasis placed on things like um, investment expenditure which as we all know is tends to be import uh, orientated and and that in itself could could go a large way in in kind of stemming range strength particularly if uh, some of the, the funding for those projects are used by the authorities to uh, build up reserves. And I think that's really going to be yeah. the, the two channels where this, where this RAND actually can possibly be stemmed, and that's through more aggressive reserve accumulation. And I also think we'd need to see probably more uh, interest rate uh, relief. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen that both the Saab and the Treasury have been in close consultation with regards to the strong RAND. And I think those are going to be the kind of measures. They're going to be brought. I don't think there's going to be any, as I say, sweeping tax. And I also think that if they had to abolish exchange controls, that could perversely actually strengthen the RAND yeah. because it would very, send a very strong message that the authorities are, are confident in South Africa's fundamentals. Well, uh, Michael, where we've been talking about the RAND looking rich all along, I mean, we've moved back above that seven level this morning. And uh, to, to note is that we haven't been holding as as strong as emerging market peers have and some saying you know the rand isn't as strong as we think it is so we're looking at it against a weaker dollar benchmark specifically what's your view on that Alicia, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's exactly what's, what's happening. Uh, there's no doubt that South Africa has benefited from this, this wall of money that's been uh, you know, laid on, on, on the doorstep of emerging markets the world over. But we are st starting to see some of those flows wane, and uh, particularly on the portfolio front. Now, you know, one could argue that there's maybe some FDI inflows possibly waiting in the wings, but I suspect that those kind of flows, as the, the governor has already indicated, is going to be used to uh, build up reserves. So I don't know how much that's going to influence the spot market directly. And uh, as a result, I don't think that uh, we can expect these flows to continue to drive the RAND weaker, at least stronger. And that's prob probably why this RAND has now started to give up some of its gains on a relative basis. It's, it's really this, this weak dollar environment that continues. Of course, uh, to bear in mind is that, uh, you know, the positive growth story in emerging markets could be derailed altogether if the currency does c uh, continue to appreciate too far. And, uh, you know, the South African position no different to that. At what level in your books does RAND strength start becoming at risk? Well, of course, it all depends on what side of the fence you're sitting on. Uh, from an exporter side, I think there's a lot of strain being felt across the spectrum. We've seen it in the manufacturing data. We've seen it in, in, in the mining data. And uh, sure, you can import for cheaper, uh, but at the end of the day, you also want to sell your, your products on to to uh, mm -hmm. foreign you know, buyers. So I think there, there's, there's certain sectors that are struggling, other sectors that are relishing in the strong rand. And uh, we've, we've seen it on, on a number of occasions that when the RAND does start to, to weaken, exporters come in quite aggressively and, and sell their dollars because they, they're scared of missing the boat again, which kind of aggravates the situation uh, because every time this RAND weaks up, uh, it starts to weaken, exporters kind of cap that strength. Uh, or that weakness, should I say. So, you know, the, 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 the key question is, you know, can this RAND start to weaken from here? I think it can. Uh, it all depends on those, those capital inflows. If they continue to come through, then it's going to be tough for the RAND to weaken. But uh, we've come a long way already, and, and we still are betting on, on a weaker RAND bias going forward.